Hi, I'm Juliana McMillan Wilhite. I'm a cartographer of change for both people and organizations. You may be wondering, what in the world does that mean? That means that I'm really passionate about maps. I just moved. That's why there's no maps on my walls. But I really believe that maps have the power to change organizations and the trajectories of communities. And I do a variety of things from GIS career coaching to geospatial analysis and consulting to help organizations better leverage geospatial work. I am really excited that you've come across this video, whether it is from the Geo Ignite conference or you just found it through YouTube or through another social media channel. I am so excited that you are here. Um, you can find uh, me on social media at Juliana Mapper, and the name of my company is Tabulae Spatial. Again, so grateful that you are here. And what we are going to be doing in this video is leveraging QGIS, although you can use any GIS platform, to create a map of point of entrance um, using the SafeGraph Canadian POI data. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to actually go and download the data. So to do that, uh, you go to shop.safegraph.com. And so it looks like this. Uh, and we are just going to select download free data. And it takes a little while to process. You have to provide your information. So we're going to save us a little bit of time and not show you that process, but that's where you get it. Again, it's shop.safegraph.com right here on the home page. So once I'm in QGIS, I am going to do a few things. If you've never used QGIS before, it's a really great platform and software. You actually lead a one day crash course intensive in QGIS, uh, which feel free to email me to find out about when our next uh, session of that is going to be. But this is the software. I work in both QGIS and ArcGIS Pro, just using the tools for the job. And so what I decided to do was to um, put this in the Lambert conformal conic projection. And so within QGIS, and I'm running this on a Mac, but it will be pretty similar on a PC. I go to Project Properties, and then on the CRS, I then went down and found the Canadia Lambert Conformal Conic Projection. Um, so again, that's Project Properties CRS, and then I found the projection that I wanted. You can obviously use whatever projection your heart desires for this. So to add in this data, which is a CSV, again, we've downloaded it from shop.safegraph.com. We want to go to layer, add layer, add text delimited. And so I'm now going to find this on my computer. And so I'm selecting, it's gonna be core underscore POI.csv and uh, it should load in pretty easily. We're saying the X field is the longitude, the Y field is the latitude. Uh, and then you can just click OK, or sorry, add, and that will add it to the map. So it's going to take a second here. Um, and so we're saying that uh, we're OK with this transformation from um, WGS 84 to the Canadian conformal Lambert. So that is A OK. Again, I think that this data is really fantastic. There's a lot of really wonderful deep analysis that we can begin to do with this data. So it has actually added to the map. So I'm going to right click on it and go zoom to layer. So we begin to see all those places adding to the map. And there are so many places that are actually in this file. And so it's going to actually take a while to load. So I'm actually going to now right click on it and I'm going to go to properties. And I am going to go on this source tab. I'm going to use query builder. And so there's these different fields that are included. And so this is the free version. You can pay to get additional attributes for, a, for, for POIs. But I'm just going to say that I want the location name like, so, and then single quote, percent sign maple, M-A-P-L-E, percent sign, end quote. So this syntax means that I want location names that contain the word, that contain maple. Um, so that's where we put that percent sign is a wild card. And so that says, you know, if there's words before, words after, you know, so that would include places called the maple leaf, the maple tree, whatever. So I'm just clicking okay. 
And now that filter should be applied on my map. In the meantime, okay, so we, we start seeing those, those added. Uh, one website that I absolutely adore is called the Noun Project. And so you can um, get uh, images or clip art here. Um, I pay for a subscription, so that is um, it's pretty easy, but it's, it's a great place to, to, to get um, to get icons. So, so I'm just going to search for maple leaf. And so you can get um, if you don't want to pay for, for a subscription for anything, you can actually um, pay for them one off or you can use them as long as you attribute the, the source of the of the images. So I'm going to select that I want. I like this one. And I'm going to select get this icon and I'm now going to pause the recording so that I can enter in my information. Okay, or you could just go on Google and search something like maple leaf, find a maple leaf like this. Um, this one has a hollow background. Hollow backgrounds are really useful for things like a map. So you can make sure so you don't have that uh, white behind it. And I'm just gonna save, save image as, and so then we have these maple leaves. So if we go back to QGIS, I'm just gonna double click on my core POI and that is opening up my properties. I'm going to layer symbology and instead of a, and so on the symbol layer type, I am selecting that I want a raster image marker. All right, and then uh, I'm on a Mac, so it might look a little bit different on a PC, but right here, I'm going to go select file. Again, we've selected raster image marker. I'm going select file right here, and I'm going to my downloads, and I am finding this file that we got online, and it has a hollow background. So this is where there's just a little bit of trial and error that's involved. Uh, so we have the width as being two. Okay, so that's two millimeters. Um, I'm going to actually change that to 1.5 and we're going to see how that works. We, we may have to come back and change these things. Okay, so that is obviously way, way too small. We can't really see our, um, our maple leaves. I'm scrolling in here. And we are going to make these 10 millimeters. All right, so right, we, see, we begin to see this map come together. So, you know, we can maybe use add an outline. There's, there's so many different things that, that we could do to this map, but I just wanted to show you a, a quick little bit about how to get started in QGIS using this data. One other thing you may be wondering is how in the world do I get a base map on here? So I use something that's called Quick Map Services. So if you go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins, and if you search for the plugins, you want to search for quick map, oh, sorry, no space, quick map services, you want to install that. And then that gets installed under, uh, there's going to be something that's uh, called web. And so if you go to web, you can then um, select all, all sorts of maps. You may have to go to the settings tab and select more services and select this get contributed pack, um, you get even more options if you select that, um, depending on what version of, if you're on a Mac or on a PC. So I, one of my favorite um, base maps is actually the, uh, what is it? Is the, no, not the Geo, oh well, wow, I use this every day. The Cardo DB Postreon, retina i really like that one so again this is just a way for you to begin to get started making a fun map using the data that's available um, from the safegraph store so again my name is juliana mcmillan wahoy i'm a cartographer of change for both people and organizations i'm honored that you've watched this video and would love for you to connect with me and let me know if there are ways that i can help your organization